Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for hearing my testimony. I stand in opposition to this bill. My name is John Howard, and I live in Boise. Uh, I'm just going to get into brass tacks. Starting with the statement of first goods and the fiscal note, it states there is no uh, fiscal impact in the general fund. And on face, that's true. There is no general fund money. But the amount of time, money, and printing and reprinting the bill productively lost in these hearings for an issue that really is a non-issue, as I'll get to in a minute, uh, it's getting very, very costly for us to even be looking at this. Not just changing all the laws and the printing fees of whatnot. I'm not a very uh, eloquent speaker, and I'm going to do a line-by-line -line reputation of the legislative intent. Uh, section 1, uh, approximately lines 11 and 12, says that the lease grounds facilities function as the vibrant core of Idaho state governments for Idaho citizens. And as you see, that's been happening now at this very moment. We have vibrant, active political citizens here concerned about this issue. It's brought the issue to light, and not just the local media, but as well as state and national media. We've been uh, interviewed for national and international media and spoken with very highly in regards to the Occupy uh, situation. We haven't had an Oakland, we haven't had a Wall Street. Uh, we've been looked up as holding a higher standard. Uh, so obviously, we are bringing the vibrant core of Idaho citizens and Idaho state governments <coughs> together. Secondly, it says, as such, requires enough simple grounds and convenient access to ensure health and safety of all citizens, including for whatnot. Uh, despite the fact that the state told the groundskeepers not to <coughs> shovel, not to take care of leaves, not to remove trash, we've been taking care of all those things ourselves. In addition, uh, we've provided uh, unobstructed access to anybody who walks through employees of the state, walk through there daily without any hindrance or hassle, as well as that people come to tourists and ask their questions. Some of the representatives of this fine body have done that very thing. Students from both middle, junior, and high, uh, high school and grade schools have come to do papers on Occupy Boise. So we've uh, increased uh, political activity as well as education for all those as well. So, so far we've done nothing but a positive thing. My question is, why this and its state specifically, Capitol Mall and no other establishment, should be considered a it's a vigil as opposed to a camp, and why this is being brought to um, court. Uh, not court, that may be later. Um, <laughs> the other thing, two other issues I have specifically with this is line 41 of section 2 states that state agency personnel or contractors can be used to enforce whatever enactment of this law comes to place and that concerns me that you're willing to hire out in this economy, well I guess it's good job creation in a negative sort of way. And finally, uh, obviously the personal property uh, concerned as litter is very worrisome. There's thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment over there that have been donated by various people in addition to the uh, outrageous number of men and women hours spent uh, making sure that everything runs smoothly and organized efficiently. And that brings me finally to section three, uh, which is the emergency clause, which is, I have no understanding as to why you need the existence of the emergency clause, and it's just sort of heavy handed in my opinion uh, for this sort of legislation. Uh, and the answer to a question that's been asked by some other people is if the emergency clause uh, were to be lifted, would I be in support of this? And the answer would be no. And as rambling as that statement was, I am now looking for any questions or comments. Other questions? Thank you, sir. Anne Hosrath. 